How does supply work in Hearts of Iron 4? Supply is one of the most important game mechanics, as your air wings, ships, and most importantly, your divisions all consume supply. Pressing F4, or this icon here, will open the supply map mode. Blue is high supply, yellow is low or just enough supply, and orange or red is undersupplied. When one of your division's supply status is below 100, an orange crate icon will appear. When it is below 25%, this icon will be red. If your divisions are undersupplied, they take massive scaling penalties to a attack, defense, and breakthrough. There are three types of equipment you need to build in your production menu depending on your supply needs. For supply that goes over land, you will need trucks and trains. Hovering over the logistics icon in the top bar will show you how many of these you're using and how many are in stockpile. Supply flows from your capital. Your capital has a base supply of 5. In addition to this, you also get 0.3 per civilian factory, 0.6 per military, and 0.4 per dockyard that you control. Supply hubs distribute your supply to your units over land. Supply flows from the capital to the supply hub and then by foot or by truck from that hub. Extending a railroad to a frontline province or tile will not help the supply situation. Supply is distributed from nearby hubs. You can build or upgrade railroads to increase your supply between a hub and the capital. Your supply rate to the hub is constrained by the lowest level of railroad. Supply hubs have a base value of 15 when connected with a railroad level 1 or river, with 5 additional supply per railroad up to level 5, giving you a maximum of 35 per hub. Rivers also provide a way for the supply to flow, but you need to control both sides to get this advantage. Rivers count as if they were a level 1 railroad. States can have multiple hubs, and they can also overlap, extending your nearby supply. Clicking a supply hub will bring up a few options. The icon on the right is your motorization level. You can set the motorization distribution level to either horses, trucks, or more trucks. Horses require no trucks. However, level 1 trucks will require 25 and level 2 will require 50 per supply hub that you set. You can also prioritize this for each army and army group. Keep in mind trucks can also be lost to attrition. You only need to change this from horses to motorized in regions you are consuming supply. Otherwise you're just moving your trucks out of your stockpile for no good reason. Mechanical vehicles such as half tracks or am tracks do not count as trucks. The icon directly left of motorization will upgrade the railroad bottlenecks to the next level for 130 production cost for each tile that needs to be upgraded. Sometimes this number can add up to a lot. You can also manually upgrade the railroads by clicking the numbers on the line between the supply hubs. The last icon when clicking on the supply hub is allied supply. This is a toggle disabling supply for allied units, keeping supply for your own units. Your allied AI should in theory avoid this zone if toggled. Supply hubs cost 20000 to construct. This is quite expensive, so be sure to only build them when you need them. Keep in mind that there are some decisions and national spirits that allow you to build them quicker. Some minor nations have access to an economic policy called Reorganize the Railway System, which allows you to build supply hubs at 300% for 120 days. Infrastructure is now capped at level 5. It contributes to the supply from state value. It also affects your division speed. Don't forget infrastructure as it can be a significant part of your supply. Trains are a technology that most countries start with. However, some small nations may have to research them. Level 2 trains, otherwise known as war austerity trains, are 20 production costs cheaper to build. Trains can be lost to enemy bombing. They have a base HP of 100. However, armored trains have 200 armor which provide the equivalent of an additional 250 HP. This means that they're three and a half times harder to destroy, but only a little more than double in production cost. In addition to land supply, sometimes your supply needs to cross large bodies of water. For this you use convoys. Convoys are used for trade, troop transport, and naval invasions. But in this case, they're also used for supply. Ports count as supply hubs. So if you rule the waves, you may find that they are a cheap alternative to building standard supply hubs. Ships also take supply when in port. So keep in mind where and when you harbor them. You do not need convoys for transporting supply along rivers. Some extra supply related things. Your plans for advancing should include trying to cut off the enemy divisions from their supply. It takes a while to repair infrastructure and convert rails, so you may find yourself out of supply often if you advance too quickly. When at war, you can now use a Scorch Earth button in the state menu, which will damage your own infrastructure and prevent the construction menu from repairing it. You can also airdrop supplies and use floating harbors for temporary supply. Be sure to subscribe for more tips and check out the comments for anything that I may have missed.